Fox 17. And now your host, Dr. James Haney. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is Haiti and Somalia. And we're fortunate to have with us uh, Dr. Leonard Madhu, an international lawyer and a co-chairman of the Clergy for Laity Concern, as well as an author and columnist for the uh, Metropolitan Times. Uh, Dr. Madhu, let me uh, welcome you to the show this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Madhu, I think that you've been involved in a large number of foreign policy issues. Uh, uh, you have a diplomatic background, and uh, you've been uh, very concerned about uh, Africa and about the third world and a number of things that are of uh, uh, high significance when we talk about foreign policy today. And I don't think that there's anything more crucial in terms of where we are as a nation dealing with our foreign policy as the issue of Haiti and the issue of Somalia. Let's have you from uh, your perspective to give our audience some information about both these countries, uh, both these very small countries, and why we are in the situation we're in today dealing with these countries. Well, well, first of all, these are problems that you know, didn't start today. They've been there for long. Uh, uh, case number one, Somalia. Everybody uh, knows Somalia is in the Horn of Africa. Uh, when you talk of the Horn of Africa, you talk of Ethiopia of Somalia, uh, to a lesser extent, uh, Sudan, and then you have Djibouti, you know, right across. Uh, Somalia really is one of the most uh, homogeneous uh, countries in the world, homogeneous in terms of uh, language, ethnicity, and otherwise. Uh, those who inhabit Somalia are called the Afaz and Nisaz. They have kit and kin in uh, Djibouti, which was called uh, French Somaliland. And then they have Kit and Kin in southern Ethiopia, which is called the Ogaden. Uh, that, that was why there was a war <coughs> in 1977 between the Somalia and Ethiopia. That was because of what I might call a Somali irredentist ambition. So uh, Somalia wanted to take that part of Ethiopia back into, into Somalia. Uh, Somalia is not really a, a wealthy country by any measurement. It's one of the uh, 15 poorest countries in the world, according to the World Bank Index, you know, with Haiti, et cetera, et cetera. I became independent in 1960 uh, from Italy and Britain. Uh, you know, you had the Italian Somaliland, uh, which is Somaliland. Uh, when it became independent in 1960, both of them were amalgamated, you know, to become one country. Uh, the current problem in, in that country really, politically, actually started, you might say, 1968. That was when the uh, uh, legitimate uh, government uh, president, uh, his name was uh, Ali Shamaki, was assassinated and Siad Barre came to power in 68. Uh, when Siad Barre came to power, the first thing he did was try to uh, introduce, you know, uh, a Marxist state according to his own definition, you know. Uh, he's been a dictator, you know, since then, uh, one of the most ruthless and brutal regimes you've ever seen. Uh, he was supported at that particular time by the Soviet Union because uh, he wanted, you know, according to socialism and the Cold War problems, uh, <coughs> with billions of dollars in arms, none in economic aid, <laughs> you know, in order to, to, to fight, which is one of the problems amongst third world countries. They spend a lot of money buying arms and all the rest. At that particular time, the U.S. was still supporting the, the government of Emperor Haile Selassie, you know, in Ethiopia. Uh, until 1977, uh, when there was a war between Ethiopia and, and Somalia. You remember the Ethiopian uh, uh, military government came into being in 1973, after Emperor Haile Selassie was overthrown by a revolutionary government called the DEG in Ethiopia. Uh, the DEG in Ethiopia declared itself uh, a Marxist communist regime. Now, when the war started in 77, the Soviet Union was uh, forced to choose sides because Ethiopia was a larger country, a larger market, more strategically important because of two red sea ports, you know, uh, Asab and Masawa. The Soviet Union switched sides to support, support Ethiopia, ran away from its original clientele, which is, was Somalia. The U.S. in turn switched from Ethiopia to support Somalia. 
So you could see that the both superpowers are pouring billions of arms into Somalia. You see, so suddenly stage of how you know people keep asking, how did they get all these guns and all this? I'm setting the stage to see how you know, all this uh, came into being. So these guns were actually put there by the Soviet Union or the United States? Uh, both of science. them, both uh, of them, because when the Soviet Union uh, was in that country, they, 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 they had an interest in the Red Sea port of Barbara, and the U.S. had an interest in that seaport too. So when the Soviet Union switched sides to Ethiopia, the Americans came in, you know, to, to, to help Siad Barre and also to keep an eye on that Red Sea port of Barbara, which, which uh, the Soviet Union built into a very big installation. Siad Barre was overthrown, you know, uh, sometime in 1991 by a group, you know, two different Somali factions, you know, fighting from the north and in the south. The, the, the current strongman in, in Somalia, General Mohamed Farah Aidid, was one of, was really the leader of, of, the, of the rebels who, who, military rebels, you know, who overthrew Siad Barre. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when Siad Barre was overthrown and he went into exile, civil war broke out between the two competing factions. What made this conflict senseless was that the two antagonists in this conflict, Mohamed Farah Aidid and Ali Madi Mohamed, belong to the same clan, the Hawiye clan, and also they belong to the same party, the Somali National Alliance. Okay, you see, so that's the, 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 you know, in a nutshell, how this conflict came about. So really, you have a civil war in Somalia between the competing factions for power, and that's where we are today. That's what, you know, started the movement into Somalia. Created by the famine uh, that created.